In our last video, we were in the historic city of Fort Smith, Arkansas. We walked the main street of downtown. And of course, we checked out the namesake fort. And as usual, we took some pictures of the unique street art. In this video, we're in Plano, Texas. For context, we visited Plano in late May of 2024. This was a stop on what we called Wanderlust 2024, a road trip from Central Florida to Kansas and back again. So today we're in Plano, Texas. We spent a few days in Wichita and now we are on our way, continuing on our journey. And they have a historic downtown, so we're really excited to check it out. As is almost always the case, we had no prior knowledge of Plano. We just found the downtown, parked, and went for a walk. And if you're from Plano, you know we missed the heart of the downtown. Although we're close, it's only about a block away. So once we figured out we were actually walking away from it, we reversed course and we'll be downtown, or at least in the heart of downtown, here in just a second. If memory serves, we were there on a Thursday afternoon, somewhere in the four or five o'clock hour. So much of the historic area centers around K Avenue and 15th Street. So that's where we're gonna be spending most of our time. Here's a little history about Plano. The first settlers established farms here between 1840 and 1872, although the population was about 155. The city was incorporated in 1873 and by 1874 had a population over 500. The name Plano comes from the Spanish word for flat, which is pretty evident. So by 1881, a fire had destroyed most of the buildings in the business district downtown, and they were forced to rebuild throughout the 1880s. In 1970, the population of Plano was only about 18,000, but it increased to 72,000 by 1980, when many large companies moved into the area. Today, many large companies have their corporate headquarters in Plano. Some examples include Frito-Lay, JCPenney, and Pizza Hut. The population today of Plano is around 285,000 and it is one of the fastest growing cities in the country. It's also ranked one of the best places to live. This building on the right is the Plano National Bank and IOOF Lodge. So the IOOF, the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, was established in 1880 and they built this building as their lodge house. They leased out the bottom to the Plano National Bank in 1887. This is the second building. Their first one was destroyed in a fire in 1895, but the building here was built in 1896. This sign here commemorates the old downtown. The first store was built down here around 1852 at the corner of 15th and K Avenue. Downtown served as the center of Plano until the 1990s when it was nearly empty due to suburban sprawl.
This is one of those downtowns where the population of the city does not necessarily predict the size of the downtown. Uh, this is a roughly quarter of a million people, and we've been to uh, cities of 40,000 that had considerably bigger downtowns. Now, obviously, there's a lot of history <laughs> as to why that is, but I was just surprised at how small of a downtown this was, given how large of a population there is in this area. As we walk around, you can see that it is pretty vibrant down here now. I know I said that in the 1990s it had declined a lot, but there are many businesses down here, and I think part of why it's been so successful is there is over 1,100 urban apartments in the downtown area. And Jeff and I have mentioned before, when you get people living downtown, a lot of the businesses follow. To be fair, when we first started traveling, what, 25, 30 years ago, actually most downtowns were in a fairly poor state of disrepair, and recently uh, we've noticed a lot of gentrification, restoration, rebuilding of core downtowns. So decades of urban sprawl uh, have sort of reversed, and now there seems to be a lot more interest in living in the city cores, and as Caroline said, the sort of key to that is to have kind of a, uh, a cornerstone building like maybe a theater and then put some residential housing in there and that's kind of the magic ingredients and boom the downtowns come back alive. Another key to rebuilding a downtown is having transportation, and here the light rail can take you into Dallas, it can take you to the airport, and it makes it more likely that people will live out in this area. And right across the railroad tracks is Haggard Memorial Park. It was created in the 1920s by the Lions Club of Plano. It's one of the first recreational parks in Plano and was named for the family that made the largest donation for the land acquisition. The current layout that you see was built in 1986. It's also home to the Interurban Railway Museum, which we're seeing right here. Here is a restored rail car of the Texas Electric Railway, known as Car 360. This park is both huge and beautiful. Kudos to those early city planners who thought to do this. Here you see the Plano Station, which was in use from 1908 till 1948. Then it sat empty until 1990 when the city bought it, renovated it, and created the museum. This building is the Plano Masonic Lodge. It was originally built as the Moore House and Commercial Hotel in 1895. The Masons purchased it in 1924 and have held their meetings there since 1925.
The building across the street is the Ice House, which was built in 1917 to provide ice to Plano residents and businesses. It's now home to Urban Rio, a cantina and grill where we had dinner. It was delicious. Yep, and directly across the street, where we're actually taking this video from, is a local brewery. Good place to go either before or after that awesome dinner. So at this point, our loop around the downtown is just about complete. We're going to check out some of the local street art, and then we'll return to give you our final thoughts. All right, what do you think of Plano, Texas? I like it. I always thought it was just urban sprawl from Dallas, but this has a historic downtown and has been here a long time in its own right. Yeah, very small, very cute. Uh, there's a transit system directly from Dallas. So hey, if you're in the area, check it out. I give it a thumbs up. Me too. All right, with that said, get off the couch. We'll see you next time. Cheers.